Welcome to this Real Python exercises course where you'll practice using conditional logic and control flow. Our exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You'll also train reading over other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. In the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step by step how I solved each of them. So you'll go through three steps for each task. You'll learn about the exercise, you'll code your own solution, and then you'll compare your solution and the process that you got there to with mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That'll give you a chance to compare not just our final solutions, but also how we got there. Maybe you'll gain some insights on the process of getting from a task description to a working solution in code. Or maybe you'll be plunged into deep despair regarding why it takes me so long to tackle a task that was immediately obvious to you. You'll start with solving some review exercises in the first section. And then slowly, you'll build up towards a proper challenge. In the second section, you'll code up a text-based role-playing game. This challenge will give you lots of opportunities to use the conditional logic and control flow concepts that you've learned about and trained up to this point. You'll also build a fun project at the same time that you can continue to develop more. Before starting this course, you should have watched the Python Basics course on conditional logic and control flow. If you went through that course, then you're well equipped to solve the tasks that I'll throw at you. The concepts that you'll practice are Boolean comparators, logical operators, conditional logic, exception handling, loops, and control flow statements. If you're somewhat familiar with these concepts and you want to fortify your knowledge with practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. Before you get started, there's another tiny bit of background for this course, which is that I'll use IDLE, the integrated development and learning environment that comes bundled with Python. If you've gone through the Python basics courses, then you're already familiar with the tool. If not, and you want to know more, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. But if you're just here to train and you've transcended the different looks of different code editors, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding tasks. And that's all there is to say to get you set up. If you're ready to get started and do some hands-on programming, then see you in the next lesson. There, I'll introduce the first exercise to get you warmed up. And I won't tell you what to do if you're not ready, but I think that taking a break is always a good idea. Okay, let's get warmed up with the first review exercise. And the uh, text for it, the instructions, they read for each of the following conditional expressions, guess whether they evaluate to true or false. Then type them into the interactive window to check your answers. And the couple of conditional expressions that we're going to look at is one is smaller or equals to one, one does not equal one, one does not equal two, good does not equal bad, good in lowercase does not equal good capitalized, and the number one, two, three is equal to the string one, two, three. Okay, you can, of course, go ahead and think this through by yourself before moving on to the next video where we're going to Check it in the interactive window. OK, so the first conditional expression was 1 is smaller or equal to 1. And I would expect that to be true. Let's test it out. Yep, it's true. It's just a little training to get you warmed up. Next one is 1 does not equal 1. That sounds false to me, because those are the same values. So this is false. The next one is similar. It says one does not equal two. In that case, that looks like it is true because it's two different integers. So that is true. And we have another one now with strings. This one reads the string good is different from the string bad. It does not equal the string bad. That sounds true to me. Yep, that is true as well. Then we have another one that reads the string good in lowercase is not the same as the string good that is capitalized. And keep in mind that something like this is true, even though it's the same word for us reading it, those are two different strings for Python. Because the case of characters matters when Python evaluates strings. The lowercase g is not the same as the uppercase g. 
So I expect that to be true. And it is. And then the last one was that the integer 123, 123 is equal to the string 123. Now, these are two different types, so they're not equal to each other, so I expect that to be false. All right, so that's a quick training session, and it worked out. And here are our solutions put back onto the slide. I'm using like a little green check mark for true and an X for false. And here's the solutions. One small equals one is true. One does not equal one is false. One does not equal two is true. The string good does not equal the string bad is true. String lowercase good does not equal the string capitalized good is also true. And the integer 123 is equal to the string 123. That is false. All right, let's move on to the next exercise. The next review exercise says, for each of the following expressions, fill in the blank indicated by two underscores with an appropriate Boolean comparator so that the expression evaluates to true. So we want all of these expressions to evaluate to true. And what we're going to do is replace these two underscores with some sort of Boolean comparator. It's up to you which one you choose. All right, go ahead, try it out. And in the next lesson, we'll together do a quick solution. So the first task read three underscore underscore four. Now we have to replace this with a Boolean comparator so that it returns true. I can see that three is smaller than four. So this should return true. And there you go. Note that if you used a different Boolean comparator, then that can be okay as well, as long as the expression evaluates to true. Then let's try the next one. We have 10 and then 5. And then again, we have to fill something in there to make this true. So 10 is bigger than 5. So that should be true. You could also do something like 10 is bigger or equal to 5. That should also be true. Or 10 does not equal 5. So there's a lot of different solutions to all of these exercises, right? You just want to put in some Boolean comparator that makes this expression be true. The next one we have is that check and chill get compared. And we want to know how we can make this expression true. So I would say for the fun of it, let's avoid using the not equals comparator, which would also return true. But instead, let's practice using the smaller than or bigger than comparators with the strings. So the first letter of these two strings is the same. Then it moves on comparing the next letter. And here, A is smaller than I. So if I put in here, smaller than, check is smaller than chill, then this should return true. If you're surprised why this string comparison works the way you've just seen, then revisit the Python basics course that these review exercises are based on. And then we have one more that is 42 and the string 42. We had something similar in the previous exercise. So these two are not equal. So we can say 42 as an integer is not equal to the string 42. That should be true as well. OK. So we solved this with the following Boolean comparators. We used 3 is smaller than 4. 10 is bigger than 5. The string check is smaller than the string chill. And again, this is because of the second letter in here. The first one is the same, but the second one in check has a lower index than the one in the right string. And then we also compared 42, the integer, to the string 42 and said that these two are not equal to each other. Great, so getting warmed up a little. Let's ramp up the difficulty a little bit. In this exercise, we're adding some logic. So you should figure out what the result will be, either true or false, when evaluating the following expressions. So first, again, think about it and then type them into the interactive window to check your answers. And you got four expressions here. First one is one is smaller equals to one and one does not equal one. And also keep in mind that there's parentheses and that they can influence the order of execution, the precedence that these different sub-expressions get evaluated. And you want to know what this complete expression evaluates to. So is it going to be true or false in the end if all of these parts of it are evaluated? And then we have another one that is not, in parentheses, one does not equal two. 
And another one that reads the string good does not equal the string bad. And this expression is in parentheses. And then or false. And finally, we have one that is again in parentheses. The string good does not equal the string capitalized good. Close the parentheses. And then it continues with and not. And again, in parentheses, we have one equals equals one. This is going to require a little bit more thinking and just go piece by piece, see what it evaluates to. Is it true or false? And then move on to the next part. And then you will come to a final conclusion. And let's do this in the interactive window in the next lesson. Here's our first expression. You can see that there's two parts that are in parentheses. So we have the first one that reads one is smaller equals to one. And then we have another one that reads one does not equal one. So the first one, one is smaller equals to one. I'm going to say that this evaluates true, true, because it's true that one is equal to one. So it's also smaller or equal to one. And then the second one, one does not equal one. That's going to evaluate to false because one is equal to one. So we have true and false. And then now I can think about what does true and false evaluate to. And we're using the logical operator and in here. And and is only true if both the left side and the right side are true. So in this case, this is going to evaluate to false. Let's test it out. OK, so it evaluates to false. Perfect. Let's move on to the next one. Next one is not. And then in parentheses, one does not equal two. Let's do the same thing as before. In parentheses, one does not equal two, evaluates to true. So this is basically not true. And not true should be false. Let's try it out. OK, that's correct. Evaluates to false. The next one we're going to have in parentheses. Good, lowercase, does not equal bad. or false. I copy that. OK, so again, I want to evaluate the piece in parentheses first. So I'm going to look at this. And it says the string good is not equal to the string bad. So that's true. This means that our new expression looks like this, true or false. And then we know if we use the Boolean operator or, then it is true if either one on the left or on the right side is true. And in this case, we have a true on the left side. So the overall value of this should be true. Let's try it out. Great, we're getting true. And then we have one more that is a little similar. So let me just make my life a bit easier and I have to type less. Good does not equal good capitalized. And then it continues with and not one is equal to one. We have two pieces in parentheses. So I'm going to evaluate these two first. I'm going to look at this that says that reads the string good lowercase is not equal to the string good capitalized. So this is true. I'm going to say true. And then I keep the Boolean comparators here. I'm going to say and not. And this part here, one equals equals one evaluates to true. Now you have to think about operator precedence here. We have an and and a not here. And if you remember that the not evaluates before the end. So we have not true is our next one to evaluate. So this should come to true and false because not true evaluates to false. And then we have true and false. Again, we know that and is only true if both the left and the right side is true. So in this case, that should evaluate to false. Let's try it out. And there you go. So here you see the reasoning steps that I went through when evaluating this more complex expressions here that involve both Boolean comparators and logical operators. And yeah, you can just go piece by piece, start with the parentheses, then kind of keep the operator precedence in mind, and then evaluate them down until you come to final value. This is also what the computer does. So you're just kind of following in the footsteps of how Python evaluates these expressions to come to a conclusion here. And here we are back at the slide. Just to conclude the exercise, here's true and false marked next to the expression. So the first two were false, the third one is true, and the fourth one is false again.